In this video, I will explain about p-values and null hypothesis. Just like before, I will try to explain using everyday language as much as possible, without using complex formulas and technical terms. Here is today's agenda. First, we will explain about the null hypothesis. Next, we will briefly explain what p-values are. Then, we will explain the relationship between p-values and the null hypothesis, and how they are used. This section will be the main part of today's video. So let's get started from here. What is the null hypothesis in the first place? The formal definition is as follows. The null hypothesis is a hypothesis that is set up in statistical hypothesis testing to refute the alternative hypothesis, and it represents the assumption that there is no difference or relationship in the population based on the sample data. However, in a gentler phrasing, the null hypothesis refers to a dissenting opinion that negates a statement, such as, no, you're mistaken. There is actually no difference in the means of the two groups. We will provide a more detailed explanation in Chapter 3, so for now, a rough understanding is sufficient. Please just remember that the null hypothesis is an opposing opinion that denies what someone is claiming. Next, I will explain what p-values are. First of all, what does the p in p-value stand for? The p stands for probability, which is the initial letter of the word. In other words, p-value refers to probability. In formal terms, p-value is a statistical measure used to evaluate whether the observed data is consistent with the null hypothesis, which assumes that there is no effect or difference. I will provide a more detailed explanation on this topic in Chapter 3, so for now, a rough understanding is sufficient. Please just remember that p-value refers to probability. Now, let's move on to the main part of today's video, which is Chapter 3. I will explain common patterns used in the field of statistics and machine learning. In statistics, we use patterns like this to prove or verify various things. To aid in understanding the content, I have prepared some examples. There is one die. It is rolled three times in a row. Before rolling, Tanaka declared, I will roll a one three times in a row. And it actually happened as he declared. Well, John and Taylor had a debate after looking at these results. John says, this seems pretty fishy to me. I don't think this die is a fair one with equal chances for all six sides. To which Taylor counters. Nah. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure this die is fair with equal chances for all six sides. But it just happened to turn out this way this time. Here, Taylor is refuting John's claim with, nah, that's not true. So Taylor's dialogue represents the null hypothesis. On the other hand, John's claim is referred to as the alternative hypothesis. You don't necessarily need to memorize the term, alternative hypothesis, but please remember the term, null hypothesis. Now let's continue. John says, This is seriously fishy. I bet this ain't a legit die, right? To which Taylor counters, Nah, that's not true. It's a legit die but it just happened to turn out this way. This is the null hypothesis as stated by Taylor, and this is the alternative hypothesis as stated by John. John says, Nah, that can't be. I mean, if I assume what you're saying is correct, the probability of something like this happening is only about 0.46%. Could something like that just happen by chance? Do you all understand? John is using probability theory to make a logical argument. Moreover, he states that if Taylor's claim is correct, then something like this would only happen with a probability of about 0.46%. This is a sharp observation. Upon hearing this, Taylor says, Oops. In other words, Taylor admits defeat as John has successfully made his point. John exclaims, Yeah, I nailed it. My point was right. And boasts of his victory. 
By the way, in statistical terminology, when Taylor says, oops, and the null hypothesis is rejected, it is expressed as the null hypothesis is rejected. On the other hand, when John wins and the alternative hypothesis is accepted, it is expressed as the alternative hypothesis is accepted. And now, look at this number. John says, if the null hypothesis is true, the probability of something like this happening is only about 0.46%. Could something like that just happen by chance? This 0.46% corresponds to the p-value. The p-value represents the probability of observing an event as extreme as the one observed, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Let's recap the process. There is someone using statistics to reveal something, and there is someone who is negating it. The negating opinion is the null hypothesis, and the opinion trying to reveal something is the alternative hypothesis. The person with the alternative hypothesis supports their claim using probability theory. If what you're saying is true, the probability of something like this happening is only blah blah percent. They present a probability. If that probability is rare, the person with the null hypothesis would say, oops, and concede. This pattern is commonly used in statistics. Now, one question remains. How low does the p-value have to be for the null hypothesis due to go, oops? In many cases, a criterion of less than 5% is used. If the p-value is less than 5%, the null hypothesis is set to, oops. However, it's not always set in stone that the threshold must be 5%. Sometimes, 10% may be used as the threshold, or even a stricter threshold of 1%, depending on what is being tested and the decision of the person conducting the test. The most important thing is to decide beforehand what threshold to use for statistical testing or validation. It's not acceptable to decide on the threshold after seeing the p-value, such as saying, Oops, the p-value is 6%, so let's make the threshold 10%. In any case, the most important thing is that making post hoc decisions on the threshold is not valid. Let's briefly recap today's content. The p in p-value stands for probability. There is someone who is trying to reveal something using statistics, and there is someone who negates it. The negating opinion is the null hypothesis, and the opinion trying to reveal something is the alternative hypothesis. Those advocating the alternative hypothesis use probability theory to support their claim. If, as you say, my opinion is wrong, then there's only a blah blah percent chance of that happening. If the probability is rare, then the person advocating the null hypothesis would say, oops, and concede. This pattern is commonly used in statistics. How low does the p-value have to be for the null hypothesis due to go, oops? In many cases, a criterion of less than 5% is used. However, it's not always set in stone that the threshold must be 5%. Sometimes, 10% may be used as the threshold, or even a stricter threshold of 1%, depending on what is being tested and the decision of the person conducting the test. And the most important thing is that making post hoc decisions on the threshold is not valid. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.